This is part two of the tutorial series where I show you how to make the shaders I used in this scene. In part one, we covered the comic dot shading. In part two, we'll cover hatching. This is what the final product of this video will look like. Link to the project files are in the description below. They are free, but feel free to donate something to keep me going. If you don't want to wait for the final shaders of this series, you can buy them now. This link is also in the description below. And that's enough of an intro. Let's begin. In the last video, we left off with this shader. Press tab to get back into it. Let's rearrange a few things now. Move your diffuse and shader to RGB over here and your group output over here. Highlight everything in between and hit Control J. This adds a frame to our nodes. Now open your side panel with N, go to the item tab, and change the label of the frame to dots and drag it to scale. Now move it down a bit and add a wave texture. And connect it to the viewer with Control Shift click. Add texture coordinates and mapping with Control T. Drag the window of the texture coordinates into the vector of the mapping. Change the wave texture scale to 30, change the Z rotation on the mapping to 25. Now we want to make the lines a little more crisp, so we're going to clamp the color values to a more narrow range using a color ramp. So add the new color ramp after your wave texture. Drag the dark value of the color ramp to about 1.74 and the white value to about 3.12. Now the lines look cleaner and have less of a gradient between them. Now change the distortion on the wave texture to about 1.3. This makes the lines look a little less perfect and a little more hand-drawn. Next, add a mix RGB. Connect the color ramp to the first color of the mix. Next, we want to grab our diffuse and shader to RGB. Drag the color of the shader to RGB into the color 2 of the mix. But let's not do that just yet. Set your diffuse and shader to RGB back to where they were. Let's keep everything neatly organized. Add a reroute. Connect it to the wire after the shader to RGB. Now you can duplicate your reroutes and place them along any wires. And rearrange things until they're in a neat and readable order. And finally drag a wire from the reroute into the color 2 of the shader to RGB. What this does is allow our hatching to be affected by the direction and intensity of a light source. Of course, after we connect it to the viewer. Now we want to clamp our light values with a color ramp. So add one after the mix. Change its blend mode to constant, and drag the white value to about 3.15. Now you can play with the light and see that our hatching reacts to it. Now let's go back into our shader. Next we want to control the hatching influence without using a color ramp, so add a map range node between your mix and your second color ramp. And just like with the dots in the last video, these values control the influence of the hatching. And just like in the last video, we're going to add a math node. Switch it to multiply, change the second value to 2, and plug it into the from min of the map range. This makes everything go dark again. Add another math node, leave this one as add, change the second value to negative 0.88, and connect it to the top value of the multiply, and set the top value to 1. Next duplicate one of your group inputs, and bring it down here and hit Alt-P to remove it from the frame. Next, drag the dots influence of your group input into the first value of your add node. Open up your side panel. Go to node. Change dots influence to hatching slash dots influence. Press tab to exit the node group and test the influence control to make sure it works. And it does. Tab to get back into the node group. Next, we want to control our colors. So add a mix RGB after the second color ramp. Drag the color into the factor of the mix. Make the first value black and the second value white and connect it to the viewer. Now drag your dots color input into the color one of the mix and change the name of dots color to hatching slash dots color. Now let's exit the node group, and change the hatching color back to black for now. Tab to get back in. Now we want to mix between the hatching and dots. Full screen this window with control spacebar, and add another mix RGB. Drag the output from the dots mix into the color 1 of the new mix, and the output of our hatching mix into the color 2 of the new mix. Now duplicate one of your group inputs, and bring it over here. Drag the clear dot from your group input into the factor of the mix. Open the side panel, change the name of the factor to hatching slash dots, and move it up the list. And over here, change base color to just color. This is just to keep the node a little more organized looking. Now connect it up. Control space bar to exit the full screen tab. Exit the node group. Now test that the hatching dot slider work. And it almost does. But as you can see, our base color doesn't stay the same when we switch. One way to fix this would be to just drag the color input into the second value of our hatching mix shader. Test that and see that it works. And it does. But there's a better way to do this that will keep our node tree cleaner. Disconnect the wire from the color 2 of the hatching mix, and do the same for the color 2 of the dots mix. And just to clean things up a bit, disconnect this group input completely, and drag the hatching dots input into the color 1 of the dots mix, and delete the extra group input. Then go over here, and duplicate this mix RGB, and drag the color output of this mix into the color 1 of the new mix, and switch the new mix blend mode to multiply. Drag the factor to 1, duplicate the group input, and bring it over here. Drag the color of the group input into the color 2 of the mix. Connect it to the viewer, and connect it to the color output if it's not already. Now let's test our hatching dot slider, and it works. The base color stays the same when we switch between hatching and dots. Next we want to control our hatching scale, so come over here. Drag this group input over and drag the clear dot into the scale of the wave texture. Open your side panel. Change scale to hatching scale. Now we also want to be able to control the hatching rotation, so drag the same group input over some more, and drag the clear dot into the rotation of the mapping. In the side panel, change rotation to hatching rotation. Now let's test that this works. Switch to hatching. 
Actually, let's switch the order of these so it starts with hatching and then goes to dots. So go over here inside your node group and just switch the inputs of this mix RGB and test it. There you go. Leave it at hatching. Now you can play with these parameters until you get what you like. And now let's play with our rotation. I usually only mess with the Z rotation, but you can always play with the other values if you want. Let's just double check everything's working now. And look here, we have a problem with our influence control. If you drag it too far in either direction, the values get too great and the effect no longer looks right. So let's go back into our node group, open the side panel, go to our influence control, and clamp the values between 0 and 1. Test it out. Now it still disappears at 0, but that's what we want. Now switch it back to hatching. And let me show you why we want to control the hatching rotation. See, when you look at the other side of the object, the hatching might not be facing the way you want it. So manipulate the rotation and scale until it's where you want it. Like so. Alright, hit Ctrl Z a bunch of times and set everything back to how it was, and back into the node group. That concludes our first hatching method, what I call the clean hatching. Now let's move on to the second hatching method, what I call sketch hatching. Now let's just duplicate all our hatching nodes and drag them down here. Now let's make a frame around our first hatching, highlight all the relevant nodes, and hit Ctrl J. Open the side panel, go to the item tab, change the frame name to hatching 1, and scale up the text. Now come down here, close your side panel, and maximize this window with control space bar. Go over here, and duplicate one of your reroutes. Bring it down here, and connect your first reroute to the new one, and connect that reroute into the color 2 of the mix shader. Now let's move things around a bit to make them look nice. Alright, control space bar to exit the full screen tab. Let's just connect this branch up to the viewer for now, so we can see what we're working with. So control shift click this mix RGB. Now come over here, and add a noise texture. Next, add another color ramp. Connect the factor of the noise into the factor of the color ramp. Adjust the dark value on the color ramp to about 0.145, and the white value to about 0.815. Add a mix RGB. Connect the color ramp to the color 2 of the mix. Change the blend mode to screen. Bring our latest mix RGB up here. Connect this color ramp into the color 1 of this mix, and connect this mix into the color 1 of this mix. Change the scale of the noise texture to 60. Now the same influence and hatching scale controls will work with this hatching as well. You can play around with the values until you get what you like. Let's set the noise detail to zero. Alright, now let's add a way to mix between our two hatching methods. Come up here. Add a new mix RGB. Connect the hatching 1 mix into the color 1 of the new mix, and the hatching 2 mix into the color 2 of the new mix. Now I'm going to exit the full screen tab. Bring the mix up to our composite stack here, and connect it to the color one of the next mix. This factor controls the mix between hatching methods. Duplicate a group input and bring it over here. Drag the clear dot into the factor of this mix. Open your side panel. Select our new factor input, and change its name to hatching1 slash hatching2, and move it up the list to be just after hatching slash dots. While we're here, let's move our influence control up. Now let's test this. Exit the node group with tab, and it works. Feel free to play around with the values a bit, that's why they're here. Alright, let's move on to the cross hatching. Highlight your hatching 2 nodes, duplicate them, and drag them down. Now add a frame around your hatching 2 nodes, and call it hatching 2, and scale up the text. Now let's connect our cross hatching to our diffuse, so grab it and bring it down a bit. If you want to keep things neat, duplicate a reroute and bring it down. Connect it to our old reroute that's just after the shader to RGB, and then connect it to the color 2 of this mix RGB. And now just connect this mix to the viewer so we can see what we're working with. The cross hatching is going to be the exact same thing as the hatching 2 but with a different rotation. So disconnect the wire from the rotation on the mapping node here. Bump the Z rotation to 30, and the Y rotation to about 132. Drag the clear dot of the group input into the rotation of the mapping. Open your side panel, go to the node tab, select the new rotation input, change its name to cross hatching rotation. Now disconnect the scale wire from the wave texture. We want to control the cross hatching scale independently, so drag the clear dot of the group input into the scale of the wave texture. Select the new scale input in the side panel, and call it cross hatching scale. Move it up the stack. We also want to be able to control the cross hatching influence independently, so disconnect the group input from the top value of the add node, and drag the clear dot from the input back into the top value. Select the new value in the side panel, name it cross hatching. We'll use this influence control to turn the hatching on and off. Move it up the stack above your other cross-hatching related sliders. Exit your node group and let's test this out. Alright, it works, but we need to clamp the values. So go back into the node group, go to the cross-hatching input in the side panel, and clamp the values between 0 and 1. Now test it again. And that's exactly how we want it. Gone at 0 and almost consuming the sphere at 1. I'm going to set the value to about 0.88. Now let's composite in our cross-hatching. So come up here and connect the last mix to the viewer. Make some space. Add another mix RGB. Change the blend mode to multiply. Drag the output of this mix into the color 1 of the new mix, and the output of the new mix into the color 1 of the next mix. Drag this mix down, and connect the output of the hatching mix into the color 2 of this mix. Drag the factor to 1. Bring it back up. Exit the node group. Exit the full screen tab. And let's test this cross-hatching. And it works. 
and the hatching dot's influence works independently, which is what we want. But right now this hatching makes our sphere look flat. Plain straight lines just form a boring grid. We need the hatching to follow the contours of the sphere to some degree. So go back into the node group. We're going to accomplish this by mixing between window and generated texture coordinates. So come over here and add a mix RGB. Bring your texture coordinate back. Connect window to color one on the mix. Duplicate your texture coordinate node. Connect generated to color two on the mix. And connect the mix to the vector of the mapping. Now initially it's not gonna look great, but we'll fix that in a moment. Drag the clear dot from the group input into the factor of the mix. Open the side panel. Go to the new factor input, change its name to window slash generated. Now let's play with this a bit. When the new slider is at zero, the hatching is flat. When we drag it toward one, it becomes more curved. Now let's mess with the rotation and scale until it looks right. So about 69 looks right, and about 14 looks good for the scale. Feel free to tweak it however you want. And that looks pretty good. Now go back into your node group. Let's add a frame around the cross hatching. Highlight the relevant nodes, hit Control J, go to the item tab in the side panel, and change the name to cross hatching, and drag up the label size. Now let's just repeat this window generated mix for our previous hatching methods. I'm going to speed over this really quick, you know what to do. Just repeat all the same steps we just did. And now name the new factor input window slash generated like before, but this time move it up the list to be just above cross hatching. This is where I think it makes sense. Let's test this slider now and play around with the scale and rotation until we get something that matches the contours of the sphere. Now let's do this all over again for our hatching one method. We're going to speed through it again as it's just repeating the same steps again, except this time we're going to take the same input we created already and plug it into the factor of the mix. And that is it for the hatching tutorial. Now you can play around with all these values and do what you want. In the next video we will be covering the six tone cell shader. This plugs into the main Pop Comics shader and allows for six bands of shading, each with adjustable color and influence. As such, see you in the next video.